The terms Britishness and photography, as all our speakers throughout this conference have emphasised, are not, nor ever have been, stable categories. And the papers in this session, somewhat provocatively titled uh, Post-Britishness, focus on photo photography uh, from the 1970s to the present day and set them into dialogue with historic photographic practice. Dialogue here not in the sense of an easy conversation, but a back and forth full of gaps, hesitations, understandings and misunderstandings. So if we take Britain and Britishness to be um, a construct what happens when we bring it into relationship with photography? Not to confirm Britishness, but to challenge it. And the idea is photography as something oppositional, I think is something which all three speakers will touch on. What does Britishness look after empire is a question that these papers also address. What does photography look like when we make this shift? So here in this session, we're going to grapple with the contested terrains of Britishness and photography. And instead of post-Britishness, we might also rephrase this session and using um, a word that um, Angela Kelly um, used in her talk and think about the aftermaths. So I'd like to welcome our first speaker in this session, and that is um, Mathilde Bertrand from the University Bordeaux uh, Montaigne, and she lectures on British history and British photography there. And she's changed the title of her paper, which you can see displayed here. Welcome, Mathilde. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thank you to all speakers for wonderful presentations in the last uh, two days. That was great. Um, so this presentation, I've chosen uh, to talk about a research project that I've started in the last uh, month on the photographic archive of the Community Development Projects, a national program which was launched in 1969 and lasted till 1978. And I first encountered um, the um, uh, community development project through research I did at the Birmingham Library um, about, the community, oh, about community photography in the West Midlands. But I, this was part of my um, doctoral research. I did not then uh, develop the topic. What interests me is that this archive of images does not have uh, yet um, any institutional home in Britain or elsewhere. Yet, it has an online existence at the University of Indiana. And this is the result of, um, of an initiative led by Professor Susan Hyatt, um, who in 2013 went on a sabbatical research project uh, on the CDP. And she found boxes of reports and images at the home of a former worker, Judith Green, in Newcastle. And they agreed to make these images available um, online through scanned copies. So we were talking about materiality of images earlier on. Um, I'm afraid my, my images are, I've only had access so far to scanned images. Um, I welcome your comments and input um, on this topic, on my paper. Um, this will really help me um, define the subject. So before I show you images, I need to go through quite a lot of uh, context. To explain what was this, um, this program. So the national CDP, I'll say CDP for short, um, was a pilot government-funded government program of research and social action aimed at tackling poverty in inner city areas. These areas were regarded as, pro as problem areas affected by multiple factors of poverty. And the CDP was defined as, quote, a neighborhood experiment aimed at finding new ways of meeting the needs of people living in areas of high social deprivation, unquote. So as I said, it was launched under a Labour government, Harold Wilson's um, government, and the focus was to be on 12 um, areas, local councils, across England mainly, but also um, Scotland and Wales. The local team started work between 1970 and 1972 and lasted for five years each. Um, I need to give you some elements about the politics of um, the, uh, the community development projects. 
the government's approach was premised on conception, conceptions of poverty which defined it as the result of social pathologies, as the result of um, individual uh, cultural inadequacies. And it was conceived, it was, um, um, sorry, um, piecemeal interventions in local areas and enticements to self-help and community participations were supposed to break the cycle of poverty. But from their work on the ground, six out of the 12 CDPs developed a clearly radical Marxist um, analysis of poverty and they understood it as um, rooted in structural factors. They decided um, these six radical, as they were dubbed, uh, radical CDPs were decided to pull the conclusions. And in that context, in 1973, the CDP Intelligence and Information Unit was formed in London, largely as an emanation of, um, of this challenge against um, the government's perspective. The Information and Intelligence Unit facilitated inter-project co inter coordination. It was responsible for the publication of a series of inter-project reports and this is where uh, photographers um, came in. The unit decided to commis commission photographers in 1976, so towards the end of the project. And this, um, their contribution would form the National CDP Photographic Archive. 13 photographers, sorry, missed this. Yeah. Um, 13 photographers were commissioned for this task with both CDP and the photographers keeping the copyright on their images. So what I did was really, um, I really set out on this project with the intention of clarifying the nature of this archive, um, its context of production, knowing the conflictual relationship between the home office and the, um, and the local projects. Also, I wanted to investigate on the nature of photographers' involvement in this project. What was the purpose of this archive? Where can we position these images in visual culture? Um, because I would like to stress the fact that they were in turn tied to a government commission. Um, they were conceived of, conceived of as recordings of the program's activities. And they were made to serve as documents of specific areas within a broader discourse of social reform and social change. I think what this corpus of images does is to provide a conflictual vision of Britain marked by crucial fundamental shifts in its economic and industrial base which clearly affected working class communities. So what you'll see is social documentary photography aimed at serving a discourse on Britain's deep social inequalities. Yet I would like to suggest these images were also constrained uh, by the, well, they were limited by the constraints of their institutional framework. Um, so to wrap up this kind of broad introdu introduction, um, I think this research project will raise broader questions about the discourses in which photography was used in the 1970s in Britain, a discourse sitting between um, the academic, the political, and the activist fields, particularly uh, would like to point uh, in the context of development of positional practices in photography, um, and I'm thinking of photo uh, community <coughs> photography among other uh, practices. So I've collected um, oral and written testimonies from photographers Nick Hedges, Brian Homer, Simon Denby, and Derek Smith, as well as um, former CDP workers Kathy Anderson and Judith Green. So let's have a look at the brief um, that these photographers were given. So at the inter Intelligence and Information Unit, Kathy Anderson was appointed as picture editor and she looked for photographers whose work, would, uh, work and approach would uh, be in tune um, with the positions then developed by the Interproject Working Party. And so she writes, quote, wherever possible we try to link up with photographers who already had some connection with or commitment to the areas in questions and who are sympathetic to the kind of ideas CDP was developing. 
In some cases, um, personal networks function to uh, suggest names. Um, for instance, Derek Smith was uh, recommended by Victor Bergen, um, his tutor at PCL. And um, Bergen worked in Coventry, whereas uh, Smith covered Benwell in Newcastle. Nick Hedges himself um, was recommended uh, on his part by Brian Homer, who uh, was in charge of the publication of the reports in the Salt Lake CDP and the Benwell CDP. And um, Hedges, of course, had already an experience uh, with shelter, and you may be familiar with the uh, uh, shelter images. Larry Herman, another uh, commission photographer, had previous experience working with town planning issues. So I think that in their choice of themes and ways of working, these photographers had an experience as social documentary photographers and also, in some cases, an experience with the constraints and politics of commissioned work. The terms of the commission uh, were to provide illustrative material for the reports and, quote, document the situation of these declining industrial areas before the CDP experiment was brought to an end. There was a definite sense of emergency as photographers intervened towards the end of the projects, as I said earlier, in 1976. Also, um, the Home Office decided to close the information unit in October 1976 uh, as a direct result of um, the polemical nature of the reports that it published, very controversial and radical reports and the Home Office resented that. So in, this, in these circumstances, the archive was meant to be a record of the work done on the ground by the local action and research teams before closure. Um, the commission expected a specific commitment on the part of photographers. Let me quote again uh, Cathy Anderson. Rather than going into the areas to record their personal impressions or do a color supplement job, they were asked to document in photographs the local project team's understandings of the important features and processes at work in these areas and to translate these analy the analytical ideas into images. So it seems, that clear, it seems very clearly here that constraints were placed on the photographer's work um, and the unit was concerned that the images should serve its purposes and the photographs were, were to give a visual representation of the issues the CDP were investigating. And we get a sense of this um, through um, what Derek Smith told me. He says that he remembers, quote, being taken through the main projects Benwell were ro working on. So he covered for them issues uh, such as, images finally, um, he covered issues such as the degradation of 1950s housing um, conditions in clearance areas, the closure also of small businesses and corner shops in Benwell, which were replaced by um, um, sh in this big shopping centre called Adelaide Shopping Centre. Um, and for this, um, the local council decided to demolish houses and to, to make room for this very big shopping centre, which proved um, to be um, sort of failure uh, four years after its, um, its building, its construction, uh, it was half empty. The rents proved too high for local businesses and Derek Smith shows the impact of this on the neighbourhood, the working class neighbourhood of Benwell. So he, his images tend to focus on the uh, urban landscape. Um, I've selected images without people and that's not really fair to him. Uh, he ha does have images with people. And, but I would like to um, just say a few words about this one. He calls it the uh, vandal's response to, um, to the shopping center. Um, so I think these images uh, produced with a very local focus in uh, very limited local areas have, however, relevance beyond their local context. They depicted processes of transformation at work in other places in, uh, in Britain and processes on which, crucially, the working class communities did not have any control. What Nick Hedges found in Saltley, in Birmingham, was a different social makeup, marked by the coexistence of different ethnic um, communities 
And certainly, Saltley was struggling with changes, transformations in its uh, industrial um, base with the closure of the car factory and the Saltley gas works, which you see here in the background. I quote him, I photographed the high street, Alam Rock Road, to try and get a portrait of the economics of the place. It, ha it, it had sorry, small businesses, independent shops, quite a variety, unquote. And according to him, Salter's problems, quoting him again, were more to do with the recognition that the two communities, the older white community and the new Asian community, were separated. And he um, emphasizes the fact that, from what he understood um, of the um, CDP's work on the ground, they uh, tried to, um, to bond the two communities together. They really strove um, to work in that direction. And Nick Hedges photographed the activities of the, of the center, notably um, the work of, done by the women's group in that, in that community. Some of his images were used on leaflets uh, for communication um, about the center's activities. Activities, sorry. Um, I think, let me show you another one. Um, this, I will talk a bit uh, of it um, again a bit later on. Uh, I think what we see here is um, a positive vision of a multicultural Britain in the making with a focus on residents um, and everyday scenes which mark the character of the place. And to me, the value of these images is in depicting working and living conditions in areas which otherwise were left without a representation or were misrepresented in the media. So possibly the intention was to contradict, contra contradict yes, the stigmatization attached to inner city areas. Um, am, I, am I being really long? I, I'll, yeah, okay. Um, right, so apart from this work of collection of images, um, the, these images became available for use in the reports that the local teams, um, CDP teams, produced and for um, reports of the inter-project um, um, working party. Um, the use of images in the reports, I'll show you covers, um, some covers here, um, was really, um, the intention was really to use photographs as illustrations. And this stemmed from a desire to make CDP findings as accessible as possible for communication to a wider audience. The, the CDP soon realized that um, it was much more useful and, um, and interesting to, to, to really uh, take their findings out into the community instead of feeding that back to the home office. The iconography of the reports piloted by Cathy Anderson used images so from from the Commission photographers, but also from public libraries and agencies. What I would like to stress is that layouts um, on the page, graphic design, iconography, were part and parcel of efforts to make these findings accessible, to make um, resources uh, within the community. And it sort of reminds me of um, the cover, it sort of covers and work that Shelter was doing in the 1970s as well. The selection of images for publication reveals concerns for clear descriptions of um, the area under scrutiny. And of course the reports were largely, largely text and statistics. And I think the, uh, the images were used to soften this. But um, here in these um, examples we see, um, well, an evocation of the vocabulary, the form and the um, narrative structure of, um, of photo essays. And Anderson um, told me that, in fact, she thought she considered picture posts as a kind of cultural antecedent. Um, I think I need to really um, hurry. So I would like to show you this image um, produced by Ken Grant uh, for North Shields uh, CDP. And this uh, image, well, his images were largely used in the reports. This photograph represents a typical scene of workers taking their morning shift. The structure of the image, with its um, sort of high angle shots here, um, evokes the traditional economy of the river, the workers in the foreground, the factory, the ship, the bridge over the Tyne. However, the photograph's capacity for making comments is limited, and um, this 
image, in fact, um, does not tell us about um, the destruction of jobs in this area. And this is, in fact, uh, what the reports brought, um, the, of course, the context. Um, but yeah, um, I think I'm going to jump to my conclusion. Sorry, but I have more images to show maybe later. So um, I think these images, and you've, I'm sorry you haven't seen many of them, but um, they provide a sobering record of um, living and working conditions in 12 areas facing the combined assaults of industrial decline, the transformation of the labor market, housing clearance, and the rise of um, social inequalities. The, these images were not conceived as um, tools for research. They were really seen, I think, first of all, as, as illustrative, as, as a document of the areas. The intention um, was to keep a trace of evolutions taking place in different parts of Britain. And I think maybe one limit was that photographers were not used to their full potential. And when the CDP folded, uh, it's not clear what happened to the images. Um, it is likely that the prints were kept in boxes in the home office and then, um, well, we, so far I have not been able to, to, to uh, certain what happened to them. But the images lived on in the reports which were widely circulated and have enjoyed really a, a, a long um, distribution. The images resurfaced, I'm going to have to skip. Um, in oral history initiatives, for instance, this photograph um, by Nick Hedges was rediscovered uh, by um, a local um, academic and he decided to launch a project called Sortly Stories, an oral history initiative. And there are other examples that I can talk about a bit later. So my project is really to further explore the uses of this archive from the 1970s to today. And I think it's a unique source in the sense that this was framed within an institu institutional structure, yet commissioners were also seeking ways of um, changing policies from within, with photography being one tool among others. So I think this archive needs to be studied in terms of its similarities and departures from other contemporary photographic practices, positional practices, experimental ones, and documentary practices. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matilda. I just wanted to open up the discussion um, in the time we have here, just to you briefly mention the word rediscovery then. And obviously you've been doing a rediscovery of your own and mm. doing a project of oral history around um, this project. But is there something um, more that you're saying about a rediscovery of this period and this kind of project as well within photographic history now? Um, I think yes, it is. Um, uh, well, heaven, I'm building on work that has uh, started to be uh, to be done by Susan Hyatt, but other uh, people. I'm thinking of uh, David Parker in Nottingham and uh, Ben Kinswood in, in Coventry, and I, I think um, yeah, it is a moment when, in fact, we are revisiting the 1970s. Um, we were talking uh, earlier about how Nick Hedges' images were rediscovered. I think, yes, there is a, a renewed interest in this period, um, also because of the debates that, it, uh, um, that developed then about the politics of representation, of course, all the debates um, within um, magazines such as yeah, Camera Work. Um, well, I'm not sure I'm um, yeah, no, answering that's, the question. That's really fascinating. I think we've got time for a couple of questions, so we'll open it out, Mark. This is just a request for a bit of extra information. I was um, struck seeing Victor Bergen's name in the list of commissioned photographers and remembering, of course, that famous show, UK 76. And just to check with you, is that the imagery in that show comes out of this project, is it that does. right? Yes, it does. Okay, and yeah. what do you think, I mean, but that's interesting, isn't it, in relation to the, 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 this project and its infiltration into or overlap with kind of fine art practice? Yeah, um, yes, this is something I chose not to develop today, uh, but of course, yes, so Victor Bergen was um, hired by the Coventry CDP to, to cover the area, and he produced images at a moment when, the, in fact, the CDP was closing. It was 
at the end of its five-year um, time. And um, yes, it, he used he used the, these images for UK 76. Um, and 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 yeah, and in a way, it's also interesting in terms of how he he built on this documentary. Um, iconography to to translate that what well, to to raise issues about about the limits of documentary okay. representation and to politicize uh, okay, these images in, in what we know is UK 76 um, so yeah there's certainly this and if I can okay. maybe talk about this later to you personally yes I can make a comment it, it's not all the imagery I mean there's a there are, there's a car factory, there's another factory, but other, other of the panels in there were made in London. Uh, but it's, it's, um, um, it's interesting that, he, that that fed into that project. My comment was a short one, and I'm interested in your response. 13 photographers, not a single woman photographer in the group. So much for the politics of representation in 1976. Yes. Oh, yeah. Completely. <laughs> <laughs> and was that, was that, your, was that commented upon? Um, I think um, when Cathy Anderson embarked on, on that uh, project of commissioning photographers, she, she had some connections because she was a picture editor, but um, not that many, I think. And uh, she, she struggled to find uh, names. And yeah, well, the same the same criticism was made uh, about about the actual composition of the CDP teams and their their findings. They, there's a whole article about about how women's issues and, and, and the gender perspective was completely left out in the, in the findings of, in the reports in the text of the reports. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, I suppose you mentioned the institutional limits, like the limits uh, placed on photographers while they, you know, traveling and, uh, you know, their itineraries mm. in these uh, various places. And if, if they ever voiced concerns or ever wrote about these, you know, uh, negotiating these limits within their own practices with documentary, and uh, also the relationship between the texts and the images, how were they anchored in these existing narratives? Mm. Like what was, what was their role in shaping these narratives vis-a-vis -vis the text? Like um, was it, did they write them? Who wrote these? How were the images mobilized mm -hmm. um, in the context of these brochures? Um, yeah, and they were freely, freely distributed, I guess, or were they? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, on your last point about um, who wrote the reports and, and did photographers have a say in this? Well, actually, no, because uh, uh, because they, they came towards the end, as I as I said, and in fact, um, the reports were largely written up uh, when photographers intervened and their images were used were used as uh, as illustration and did not really have a say in how uh, they were used. But I, I raised the question to Nick Hedges and he told me that there was the sense of, uh, sense of trust um, that uh, the images would be used uh, in, uh, in ways that he approved of. Uh, but I mean, that, that's about it really in terms of, uh, of the leeway. Um, and uh, about, exp well, Nick Hedges also is quite interesting. Um, he had an interesting role in this. Because, uh, he, Chento, your, the first part of your question, he um, had worked with um, the shelter charity in the beginning of the 1970s, and he has written a lot about how um, this placed constraints on his, on his work, and you know, because of the um, ideological and rhetorics of, uh, of, the, uh, of charities, um, which Orientate um, the use of images. He was very, really aware of this. Yeah, yeah. This is um, more of a comment and, and also a response to John's uh, um, comment a, a moment ago. I wonder if you're you're probably aware of this, but do you know the People's Autobiography of Hackney? Because this is around the same time. It's an extra governmental project that actually included a lot of women photographers mm -hmm. and. 
women photographers from namely Jo Spence, um, you know, uh, and, and other members of the Hackney Flashers. And it has a similar kind of um, social radical um, um, address, mm -hmm. but a much more, uh, it's explicitly extra state as well, and much more um, careful in its treatment of, of, of text and image. Mm. Uh, and much more collaborative, and it yes. might be really Come interesting on. because of this sort of gender division as well as the uh, the fact that you have kind of art photography we think of as artists, or, um, um, as well as radicals, activists working on this sort of this project, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, this other project. So it's well, really that, more yeah, that would be a, a great counterpart uh, to, to to this project. Um, I'm, aware of, I'm aware of this, yes, and. Uh, I think the difference here is that, as I was saying, the photographers have very li limited um, input, in fact, apart from, well, of course, making the images. And probably in, in the Hackney projects, they were central to the, to the projects. Joe Spence would not have allowed to... to yes, and this clearly was not the case. Yeah. Okay, well, Joe, thank you for some of that paper.